internet, I'm Bridget, your friendly neighbourhood spoonie. Last video I went into details about fibromyalgia and how it affects more than just pain. This time I'll be doing the same for chronic fatigue, also known as myalgic encephalomatitis, I probably pronounced that terribly, or ME. A lot of people know it more as ME. It was renamed to chronic fatigue syndrome a few years ago. Um, I'd like to go into talking about how it's more than just fatigue, but to start with, most don't necessarily understand what's meant by fatigue. It's not simply a synonym for tiredness. It's deeper, it's more like a, a bone deep tiredness. You often find yourself so exhausted you can't do anything. Um, I tend to find myself falling asleep in sort of very strange places like on the bus, sitting in a public place, even on the toilet. Lots of fun there. And it can come on very suddenly. You can start off feeling fine and then just suddenly drop. The worst case scenario for me especially is temporary paralysis. It's not something very well understood but if I push myself too hard, if I keep ignoring the signals from my body, I will find that my, my body just shuts down. My brain still working, still functioning, but my, I can't move. It's, it's horrible, it's like being trapped in your body and it takes, it takes a while to sort of slowly come back to yourself. You, you find you can, you can sort of move a finger slightly and then after a few minutes you can maybe nod your head after like an hour or so you can maybe stand up wobbly and it takes maybe a day to get back to normal from that. It's a difficult thing to manage and um, it's happened to me a few times. The worst one being I was out shopping with a friend, I'd said to her, okay, I'm just going to go to the loo. And whilst I was in there, in a disabled toilet, this happened. I was sat unable to move on the floor of a toilet for half an hour before I managed to get someone's attention to come and help me and even then I could barely explain what was happening because I could just about nod my head or slur yes or no. I eventually managed to sort of message my friend with my phone sort of dangling down here and just uh, and she came and sat with me and Bless them once, once the people who worked there realised what was going on. They were, they were incredibly helpful. They helped me get into a wheelchair and from there took me down to get into a taxi so that I could get home. But it was, it was around an hour before I could even manage to get into the wheelchair before I could manage to tell them what was going on with me, that I didn't need an ambulance, that I knew exactly what it was, I just needed help. Um, it was a horrible, horrible experience and something I don't really like talking about all that much, but that's what these videos are for, to explain, explain just how bad these things can be. So going into the other effects and the other symptoms, sleep is a big one. Insomnia is common, like with fibro, 
it can be hard to sleep. Quite often I get so tired it makes it hard to sleep, which is a bit of a a bit of a backwards concept. But yeah, the, the idea of being so exhausted you don't have the energy to make yourself get to sleep. Um on top of that you tend to get sore throats, swollen glands, sinus problems. I always get a sharp pain in the soft pellet at the top of my jaw whenever I'm going to get ill. It's sort of a, an early warning sign of, of an illness creeping up on me. There's problems in the brain, problems thinking straight. I tend to lose track of what I'm saying in the middle of a sentence. I struggle to remember things. There's men memory problems. I quite often forgot, forget simple things like what I've eaten, when I last brush my teeth, things like that. Um, worryingly there's heart palpitations. I've not necessarily noticed that myself but it's not something that you would notice really and I wonder what strain that's having on my heart a little worryingly. Um, early studies have shown a link between chronic fatigue and the immune system. So research from the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience at King's College has discovered that the immune systems of people with chronic fatigue, fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome may have been overactive in the first few months of suffering. It's possible that this is a cause of chronic fatigue, that maybe the immune system overreacts and that's what triggers chronic fatigue. But no one really knows what the Oh, I've forgotten the word I'm trying to think of. See? Memory problems, forgetting what I'm saying, all of that stuff. Um, no one really knows what is going to come of this. No one really knows if it's the cause, if it's just a strange connection. It, it needs a lot more looking into. Um, I will provide a link in the description to the King's College News website and the article on this if you'd like to go and have a, a bit more of a look. Personally, I've noticed that I get sick an awful lot easier since I developed chronic fatigue. If there's something going around, I will 100% get it. Um, and it takes me so much longer to recover. I find myself stuck, unable to do anything for weeks after catching a bit of a cold. Um, and it's, Anyone who suffers from a chronic illness will probably understand this. It's the, what is it this time game? It's like, I'm, I'm feeling ill. Is it because I've caught something? Is it because of fibro? Is it because of chronic fatigue? Is it just because I'm feeling down? What is it this time? <laughs> it's a fun game to play. In conclusion, if someone you know has a chronic fatigue, be patient. Life can be difficult for us. We don't necessarily look like we're sick, but it's hard. And listen to the person who suffers because they know their body. They know what they're going through and how they're feeling. Don't try to fix things, just listen. And if you are suffering, learn everything you can know about your symptoms, know about new discoveries that are going on, things that can improve understanding of it and don't push yourself more than you're capable of. Be kind to yourself. Um, and that's it for the video. Um, I hope that they've helped some people and I hope you all keep your eyes out for more. Thanks for bearing with me through these long explanations and let me know if you liked them. Goodbye, Internet.